anyone here do magnets. Cool, thanks. That's awesome. So what I'm going to show you is I've been a horse trainer for over two decades. And I'll share a little story about how I got into that. So MagnaWave is a really awesome company. When I did the Retired Race Horse Makeover in 2019, it was in Kentucky. That's where MagnaWave is based out of. And they're in Lexington, Kentucky. And my horse that I took along with me, I had over 200 training sessions on this thoroughbred. By the time I got her off the trailer after a 13-hour ride, it was not the same horse I loved. And we basically bombed my freestyle. And it felt like she had electricity shooting through her back. I just couldn't get her settled. And it made me so sad and so upset because this horse had worked so hard. And at that point in time, there was nothing I could do for her. I tried and tried and tried to get this horse to calm down and get this horse, everything I knew how to do. So to make a really long story short, I started to realize that everyone at this show, pretty much all of the top 10 people that finished had their horses magnate. So I started looking into it a little bit and I called about this machine, which is the first machine I purchased. This is the MagnaWave Soul. Okay? These aren't cheap, I'm not gonna lie. This, was, this one runs around $10,000. So this was a big undertaking for me because at the time I'm like, oh gosh, I don't really want to put out all that money for this. I don't know if it's gonna, I'm, I have seven horses of my own. There's usually 11 in my barn to 15 at any point in time. I'm like, if anything, it will work for my horses. It'll work for me, I can treat myself. I mean, I've been a trainer for so long. We all have injuries. I thought it would be a great way for me to treat myself. So I got it, but you know, I'll treat a couple of clients for well, 1,200 horses later, here I am. So it became a booming business for me very quickly. But here's the thing. Magnaway was a wonderful company, and very quickly I realized that I got to my mothership machine. Okay, so this is the Julian Duo. I'm sure you're okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have traded up, it's like trading up a paperclip. I have traded up machines four times to get to this this machine. So this one's really cool and I'll show you how this works. But what I want this to kind of be is a little bit of an interactive for you guys because a lot of people have questions about hemp therapy and it is a really wonderful modality. Now I don't just do hemp. I also do cryotherapy. I do myofascial release. I do stress point therapy. I do a little bit of uh, Masterson method. I do all kinds of red light. I do laser. I do a lot of other modalities because I like to stack modalities. Because there's not really one thing that fixes everything. And MagnaWave isn't a cure, but what I use it for is preventative. Okay, and that's what I'm going to talk to you guys about today. From being a horse trainer for so many years, I felt where this machine goes. There's been a lot of mystery lamenesses that have come up on horses, and I'm like, I really wish I could have figured that out. But the machine gives you a clue on how to get under the hood. I never really know where it's going to go. Okay, and when I start treating the horse, and I'll show you, it's really neat how the machine moves through the body and it basically finds the spots that need to be released. So let's not get crazy scientific because you can go look that up on the internet. Here's my really simple layman's terms of how I describe this to the client. Okay? Your body is made up of trillions of cells. They're all over your body, your walking bag of cells. Right? Inside every cell, it's like a battery charger, just like maybe on your cell phone, think of it that way. When you have an area of trauma, stress, injury, uh, all the parts of your body go to that area and it depletes your cell, your, your batteries in that part of the cell. Okay, so what MagnaWave does is it basically goes in there and it puts oxygen back into those cells and pumps up your battery. So think, yes, it is that. So think in terms of raisins and grapes. Here's the simple, easy way to describe it. When you have an injury, your cells shrivel up like raisins. And they coagulate, they stick together because they're working overtime to try to get that part of your body to heal. Okay? Magnaway goes in and it makes it like a plump grape so it can move and bounce and everything starts to move throughout the body. So think of it that way, right? So we're always trying to pump up the body and make it better. So your immune system is stronger, the skin, the coat, the hook, everything of the horse gets better. I have the next question everybody asks me is how often do you treat? I have weekly, I have bi-weekly. I have monthly, and I have people that just call me on the way. Okay, I try to tell everybody that you need to get ahead of your injury, ahead of your any kind of pain, because what we're trying to do is we're trying to create longevity. It's my favorite word, longevity, okay? 
don't call me after your horse is dead lame because chances are it probably was simulating all that time and you just now saw it. Okay, so my whole thing with Magnawing and any type of wellness and vitality since I've gotten started into this side of my business is that I want to make sure that the horses that we are riding are as healthy as they possibly can be. Okay, the next thing is PEM, right? There's all types of it now. PEM is PEM, PEM is great. Whether it's coming out of a femur, whether it's coming out of a pulse, whether it's coming out of a magnet wave, I'm not going to stand up here and tell you one's better than the other. It's just the delivery. You like it low frequency and you want to put a blanket on your horse? Oh, great! If you want somebody to come out and put tubes on your horse and have a one treatment in about 50 minutes, 40 minutes, 30 minutes, 20 minutes, great! It's all your preference. One is not crazily better than the other, right? And the way that I describe it so people understand it is if you took a sponge, right, and you have an eyedropper, if you took the eyedropper and you placed little droplets of water on a sponge, that's kind of how a beamer might deliver. Okay, it's a little bit slower, but eventually your sponge is going to get wet. You take a mag wig, you submerge the sponge. Okay, it's a little bit faster. It doesn't mean it's more overbearing. Okay, it's all in my hands how I deliver this pen. Okay, I can control it. This machine goes up to 20. I rarely get it off of three or four. And even for a person, it's, way, it's like way high. It's super powerful. Uh, one of the things with the horses is they have a very low magnetic field. They, people think because they're bigger than us that they take a lot more power from a machine, and it's not true. This machine is actually all I ever really needed. But I like the power in this one because I know I have it if I do need it. Okay? Um, this one's also a little bit better because, like I said, I go to some barns and treat 10 horses in one day. So I'm, I'm putting hours on a machine, and I run both. I have basically three machines. These are analog machines, which means they need to be recalibrated. They also, Magnavig also has digital machines which run on a computer chip, which don't have to be recalibrated as much. So again, if you have questions about machines, I basically ran almost every single one of those, so I can give you a great understanding of how they work, how they feel, how you use them, what they feel like to the horse, et cetera, et cetera. So, with no further ado, Ben, you want to come on over? He was my, he was my little model the last time I did this lecture. Leah, do you want to talk about Minnie? Because I do a lot of work for Daisen. Yeah. Daisen is great. Minnie's like their little ambassador. So do you want to just give him a little, sure. a little overview about Minnie? Sure. So Minnie is from Daisen Farm Horse Rescue. We're located in Woodbine, Maryland. We're a 501c3 nonprofit and we're directed with animal control. So every horse that comes to us is either a neglect or a abuse case so it's by animal control. So Minnie actually came to us from Frederick County, Maryland. Yeah. 
And so usually, but that might be because I've been a trainer for 20 years and I can work my way around it, make sure that they understand it and what I'm doing with how I'm administering it. So I'll usually start at the shoulder because that's probably like the least part of the body where they feel intimidated by somebody walking up. I usually start around the scapula at the top, okay? So I'll work my way back sometimes. With thoroughbreds, I usually can't get past here on the first visit. They don't even let you on the hind end, okay? So if I can get from here to here on the first visit, fantastic, okay? I let the horse gauge where I need to treat them. They kind of guide me through the treatment and that's where I start and stop. Okay. Um, typically a treatment is about anywhere from 30 to 50 minutes and basically we go from there. So my horses that I see weekly, probably about 35 minutes is plenty. And that's me going through mild partial, going through the, the stress points, going through all that. So I also, one of the other attachments, small wave wings, you can see it's like a clam, it opens up. Now if you guys are thinking for people, elbows, knees, you can put them right on your head. I have PMJ, I put this sucker right on my face. You can put it on your low back. You can put it over your knees. So basically, when you see the tape on the attachments, it comes out through the tape, this way, like a lightning bolt. It doesn't really come, the horse or you won't feel it through this end. So it's only gonna be on this end. When you use it, however, if I would use it this way, it would go up, okay? If I would use it, this way, it's going to basically go down, okay? And sometimes with this one, on a horse's hip or on a horse's shoulder, you can rotate it and you'll get different muscle groups. It's really kind of cool. So you can kind of go like a clock and a little bit of a, a laser beam weight, this way, this way, that way, and it'll start to radiate through different muscles, okay? The other one that I tend to use a lot, but I don't start with, and obviously we're dealing with a smaller, a smaller mini. So. This is your large wave wings. A lot of times I just drape this over the horse on the shoulders, the back, the hip. If, if they're really good, I can get it right between the head here. It drapes on either side of their eyes. You can do this where you can figure eight it. You can, keep, you can kind of, you can bend these. You can do whatever you want with them. But basically, again, it's coming double. So for people, their favorite way to use it is front back, like that. Okay, you can wrap it around your low back. If you have low back issues, you can sit on it. You can figure eight it. You can stand through it. You can make a backpack. You can make suspenders. You can do all kinds of things with it, right? So basically, this is the one that I end up using probably towards the end of a treatment, but it's not gonna be the one I throw on the horse right away because they just need to get used to it. Believe it or not, they don't like the end piece more than they don't like this piece, okay? So if I have a cover on it, like how this one is a cover, That noise is what scares them more than anything. But this one's great. This is just a little bit bigger tube. And again, it's going to come mostly through this part. This one's good to lay on the hip. For Vinny, it pretty much covers his whole back. So it's great. You can kind of hot dog it and roll it. Okay. But we're going to start with the paddle. And I'm going to show you how this works. Basically, power up your machine. I'm only on one side of my machine right now. There's two separate machines here. Okay, so I'm just going to start at one because it's important to start at a low setting and move your way up. We're not trying to get the horse into where they're bracing against it. It's so important. There's a lot of practitioners out there, but I tell them all the time, you don't want to see the horse going. Okay, because then they're bracing against it, right? If, if throughout the treatment they start to get looser, the fascia starts to loosen, the muscle starts to loosen, you might see more of that. But if you just go up to a horse and you throw those tubes on and you crank that thing up to 10 and that horse is moving, you're gonna, hear, you're gonna even hear them going uh, 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 because it's, all, it's on their diaphragm, it's moving everything. You don't want it to be overpowering to the point where they're bracing against the pulse. Okay? This should be like a gentle massage. So you probably won't see anything from where you're sitting because I don't have it turned up high. Right? But when we start going down the body, I always work along the spine. Okay, I'm not one that goes and just slaps the tubes on the legs, okay? Because here's the thing, when I started te learning so much about anatomy and physiology, most of your injuries and your stress happens in the spine, okay? If the spine is not working the way that it should be, all your injuries are gonna trickle down through the legs, okay? So you're kind of going to where it all went instead of going to the source. 
And that's why I always start at the top, because mostly, like if we have a psoas problem, it's gonna throw back to the stifle. And if it throws back to the stifle, it's gonna throw down to the hock. And if it throws to the hock, it's gonna throw to the ankle and the ankle to the foot. And before you know it, your horse is limping. And you're wondering why that happens. So you go to treat the foot. But where did it start? So you gotta backtrack and go unwind where it started from, okay? And this is where MagnaWave is so crazy because you can have diagonal fascial lines, you can have from the left hip to the right side of the pole. I mean, there's crazy things that connect and it's really cool doing so many horses and having my hands on so many horses all the time because they have basic patterns that are about the same and you're gonna see across the board like your performance horses or anything to that, to that matter, they're gonna have sh sore shoulders, they're gonna have sore poles, they're gonna have to the point where the area of the glutes is sore, the hamstrings are gonna be sore, so the certain areas of the body are gonna be a little bit more reactive, but as you go through, you wanna to get to the top point and the source of it. Now see, I just turned it up to two, can you see the fasciculation? Okay, but it's not actually happening where my paddle is. All right, so now you're starting to get into where the muscle originates and inserts. Okay, long muscles. I'm, all, I'm over the lunges of the dorsi muscle right now, which is basically attaching from the pole all the way back. Okay, so this is a very long muscle. What you need to think about is the tensegrity and the balance of the horse. Okay, so we're not going to make this harder than it is because I like everything to be simple. Science is crazy enough. If you take a piece of saran wrap okay, and you stretch it from Vinny's ears all the way back to his tail, and it's just your fresh piece of saran wrap. That would be your freshly out of the womb horse, right? Over time, what happens to that wrap is we go right there to it, okay? How does that little crinkle affect this side, affect this side, affect this side, affect this, affect this? And then another little crinkle happens over here, and another little crinkle happens over here, and then over here, and then up here. Your suddenly wonderful piece of saran wrap now looks completely different. Okay, so that's your tensegrity and your balance. That's where people don't kind of realize, well, how did something back here affect something up there? Tensegrity. Okay, so when something is throwing from here to here, that needs to be fixed. Just the same as, think of that freshly piece made saran wrap. You can try to stretch that sucker as much as you want, but there's still going to be slight wrinkles in it, right? Who wrestles with that on your leftovers? <laughs> it's the same, right? Same source. MagnaWave I think of as putting that saran wrap in the microwave and giving it a little bit more flexibility, a little bit more stretch, a little bit more elasticity, okay? A little bit more pliability in the muscle structure, right? So that's what your MagnaWave is going to go in and do, right? Now we're going to gradually go up to three. You see how the gluteal muscle is moving? Can you guys see how it's going all the way down the hamstring, right? And here's the thing, everyone's like, well, how do you know if it's too much or too little? The horse will tell you. They'll just absolutely move away from you. Okay? If they're like, ooh, okay, well, then you turn it down, you go back. Or you just move to a spot right in front of it, so that's, I just make a mental note, that part's uncomfortable. And then I start thinking, okay, well, this might attach over here, which could attach here, which might attach up here. Okay? And all these different pieces of the horse, when they pull away and I go to, the, to do the stretch points, which I'll show you in a second, then you can start to kind of unravel. You can start to unwind. You can start to think. Your musculoskeletal system, if you think of Vinny just standing here as a skeleton, right, his hide or his skin would put over the top of that skeleton. Now, if you kind of take that hide and you pump it up with air, that's turning into your confirmation. Okay, we're sort of responsible for that. about the body and you think about how it relates okay I'm gonna come up here hi Benny I'm gonna go right under here under your hide oh is this a trick is this where he goes what's his yes cue on my end okay <laughs> he's got all these tricks that he does so I didn't want to get <laughs> okay so underneath the horse's jawline right where I'm at that's the hyoid. That's where your your jaw uh, your tongue attaches. The hyoid goes all the way down the front of the neck, and it starts to get into the sternum, and then it splits. Okay. So when a horse has a tight jaw, or they have TMJ problems or issues, or even the top part, when they have any part of this section, hold 
us, they get really still, and then they start to lick and chew. So let's go over, how do you know when the horse is releasing? They fidget, just like he's doing, okay? Suddenly they'll start fighting at their owners, they start fighting the lead rope, they start fighting the cross ties, and everyone's like, oh, don't like it. I'm like, no, no, they're just fidgeting, because what happens is, they get this different feel, and then they go, well that, and they shake their head, they get this different feel, and then they can't figure it out for a second. And then as that starts to release, then they yawn. Vinny, you're like the best, right on cue. They <laughs> yawn, they lick and chew, you're the best. Yeah. And they shake their head, they'll start to call, they'll walk around in circles. Now what's really cool about horses, we need to turn up this energy. Most of the time, when I first go out to do a horse, they will walk away from me to release, okay? And the reason that they do that is horses in the wild, if they are hurt or injured, they hide it because they'll be left, okay? So, <laughs> leave the projective thing. Okay, so, so they will hide their injury. A lot of times, if you just take a step back and you walk away, horses will go to the corner of the stall, hide their face, and start yawning and looking and chewing, and then they'll walk back to me and be like, okay, now you can and about the third session, they see me coming, I open the stall door, and they're like, oh. they're yawning and licking each other, ladies here, okay? So it's really, really cool how they learn to release. They go through this stage in their body, and they start to learn that they can let it go. It's okay to let it go in front of somebody. It's okay to release that. And a lot of times, your, your detox, they'll drink a lot of water. It's, it's, I have two bears at home that have gas colic, like usually four, four or five times a year when the weather changes. They can be down in their stalls and I throw the big loops on them and they're up in 20 minutes. And it has really saved, it's like a gut massage. So you can start thinking about like your cellular massage is actually cellular exercise. Okay, how great, right? A lot of your digestive problems and your immune system issues or their breathing capacity, all of that is, is really, really good. You're trying to get ahead of the immunity, okay? So all of that stuff that you're trying to build is fantastic. So let's change our attachment. By the way, my machine goes up to 90 minutes. You get in your routines. Do you have a routine? Yeah. I don't know why, but I leave mine run 10 minutes, and then I go turn it on again for 10 minutes, and I go turn it on again for 10 minutes. I, it's just my thing, because I started with the soul machine, which goes off every 10 minutes, so it's just automatic in my head. So I have this thing that I do, it's 10 minutes, the machine will go off, I go switch my attachment, 10 minutes, the machine will go off. That way I can kind of build on where I'm going through the body and I can make it make sense for me. Now sometimes you can stay on one side and then the other. You can stick with the shoulder and the shoulder. My thing is, I do one whole side, I go to the other whole side, and then I do one overall. Okay, so it's just the way I do it. Unless I have, there's no real right or wrong way, you just kind of get to your thing and then you start going with it. Vinny, which attachment would you like next, sir? Well, you can't have this. He said, I'll take that. <laughs> you want this one? Let's do this one. <laughs> so this one's a little bigger. I think this one has more power. And usually my, my uh, human clients will tell me the same thing, that this one packs a little bit more punch. So did you guys know that Pemp is actually in space suits for our astronauts? Because, I hope I get this right, I haven't studied this in a while. The Earth has no magnetic field once they leave, right? Yes. So they put it in their space suits because the one interesting thing was that they sent twins into space. One stayed, one stayed here and one went into space. When the one came back, he had aged like astronomically more than the other one that was here. So they started to realize that you need pulse electromagnetic field therapy when you leave the atmosphere. Okay, cool. So my theory, honestly, is we will all have these machines in about 15 years. We'll, be there. we'll have them in our homes. It will be something like eating, drinking, exercising, and pimping. Because I, we're, we're like destroying our atmosphere and doing things in the environment and this is a way for all of that to come back and to keep us healthy, okay? I think that it's a fantastic, I treat myself probably, I don't know, maybe three times 
But if I have an injury, guess what? I go to instantly, like instantly. My horse, um, I had a pretty bad fall about two weeks ago, right before I came here. Vinny, do you want to sit down? <laughs> Come on up here, sir. We're going to go back to one. I just want to make sure he's not moving because it's too much. So, uh, like two weeks ago, I ended up falling off my horse and back to my helmet. Took the whole it back in my head. Boy, did my neck muscles hurt. My goodness, it was all small and the first thing I went to was pen. And I'll tell you, it was down in about two days. It cuts your recovery time almost in half. Okay, so it won't change anatomy, but it does help with all of your muscle and your, your swelling and inflammation. Anytime you have an injury, one of the first things I go to is my pen machine. Um, you do have to get used to it, however, if you are a practitioner. Okay, so I had to get used to it when I do, sometimes I do 10 to 12 horses in a day. Like I just hustle through appointments and I have to make sure that I hydrate and make sure that I drink water or else I feel sick like at the end of the day. Okay, so it's like my body going into overload detox. Okay, so you got to really make sure that when you do even get a treatment, hey, you took my microphone. To say something. Are you fine with me? Does he smile or is it yes or no? Oh, yes. I thought he was a smile. Okay, so as we're doing this, I just want to show you some other things. So you guys are seeing how the pen works. I just want to show you some stress points. Okay? So, I'm going to get out my little myofascial tool here. All right, when we go through the stress points of the horse, and a lot of times I'll put the bigger tubes on the horse, and I'll let that work, and then I'll go through the stress points on the front or the back of the horse, depending. If I have the tubes up here, I'm gonna go through them on the back end, okay? One of the biggest spots for any horse is the rectus capitis. Can you turn this way? Okay, so this is your area where your atlas, which is your first cervical vertebrae, where the muscles all come up and attach. So right about here in the neck is gonna be where it's a little bit, it's gonna be where it's a little bit touchy. So right there we know he's a little bit reactive because when they try to pull away, sometimes they, they are, you just released. Okay, so sometimes when you put a little pressure there or you start to just get to that pressure point, You'll see them kind of pull away like you did, and then you turn your head, and then they open their mouth, and they start licking and chewing, and they'll yawn, shake their head. That's a little bit of a release happening there. Okay, so we'll go down to the second point. You're welcome, Benny. Your brachiocephalic, which is this muscle at the bottom, responsible for bringing the leg up. It's responsible for bringing the neck up. It gets really sore for most horses because it's an area where there's a lot going on. The horse is always moving. The horse is always moving its front legs. The horse is pulling with the front legs. The horse has most of the weight on the front legs. Your performance horses, even your horses that are standing in the stall most of the time, they're putting a lot of that pressure and weight. If they're uneven, they might be putting more weight on one side or the other. Compensation. If you have a horse with an injury and it's in the stall, guess what? It's not just that foot that you have to worry about. It's all the compensation that's going on through the rest of the body. Okay, because a lot of times you have a situation that arises and it wasn't the first thing that started. Okay, so if, it's just like you, if you have a bad hip, you're going to be like, oh, you're going to protect it a little bit. You might get sore somewhere else trying to protect that area. So when we look here at his brachiocephalic, if I were to add a little pressure, you can see he's getting fully and it's sore. Okay, so that area there, we want to concentrate on making that area come loose and be a little bit yawning again. Then you're the best. He's like the best one. You're complimenting me like crazy. Yes. Okay, so your multiplicus cervicus, right here. Okay, so that's the anterior edge of your scapula. You have to kind of get behind and inside there, right? If any of you have ever had a massage, the massage therapist does this to you, and then they start going underneath your scapula. That's basically what we're doing to the horses. Your infraspinatus and your supraspinatus muscle, responsible for this movement. Okay, with the horses, they have no collarbone. So when they're opening here, all of your muscles underneath the scapula get really sore. So, supra, infra. Okay, so those two areas are actually sore for him. Now, if we go up here, we have rhomboid, we have trapezius cervical, trapezius thoracic. You guys follow me right over to the demo. 
I'm going to be doing all this for Standing Still for Mounting because it has to do with everything when your horse walks away from you at the mounting block. Okay? It's not just your horse walks away from you from the mounting block. It's been happening for a while. Okay? So these muscles, if we go in front, right there, he's tight. You see the reaction? If we go right here, that's better. And right behind, he's tight. Did you see the little fasciculation that happens? So area in front, area behind. On a riding horse, this will be saddle fit it's going to affect. It's going to affect how the horse opens that shoulder. It's going to affect how the horse turns. All of that stuff. Right? If you start coming back into this area and you're looking at your trapezius thoracic again, but this area usually is a very sore spot on riding horses. Okay? Because that part, right, when you push there, yes. Okay, again, that's where their shoulders and their scapula is rotating. So if it's pulling down, horses, and they don't have to be active. Like, you don't have to be riding them for this stuff to happen. Your horse is out running around and they slip in the mud and drop a shoulder. They can pull that shoulder, that wither down, that first rib can pop out of place. It's really, really easy for all of that. And then they're like this. It's like you walking around with one shoulder up, one shoulder down. Or you walking around like this all the time. Or are you walking around crooked, okay? So what we're trying to do is make all of that even so that your saddles do fit. That your saddle pads stay steady and even so they're not pulling, right? When you go to mount, what do you think happens over the course of 20 years of you mounting on the left side? Okay, what do you think happens to your horse? Stand there and put your foot in the stirrup and they go, oh God, here we go. And they brace themselves over on the other side. What happens with horses, they're not symmetrical. They don't fall out of the womb symmetrical. We're right-handed and left-handed. Okay, so same for them. They're not all just actually even. Most horses are better on the left and horrible on the right. Okay, it's pretty much 85% of horses are better on the left and awful on the right. Okay. So that means if they're flexible on the left, they're pushing on the right. If they're flexible on the left, they're overcompensating on the right. One side's gonna overbuild, okay? So it's important for us to get flexibility and stretch in those muscles. If they can bend really good one way, and then they come this way and they go, I can't do this, but I can give you all of it. it it's, not, it's not even. So your circles and all of your work under saddle, it's not gonna be even no matter how much you train it, okay? So it's important, all of this goes together. It's a big, full picture. It's not just, I'm gonna train it out of my horse, because I tried to do that, and it didn't work, okay? And it made me realize, I always say, Disco's the one that got me the Magna Wave machine, because if it wasn't for her, I never would have even thought I needed to do this. I thought I had the answers for all my training. And I've quickly realized that I do not, and neither do half of the horses I train, over half of I'd say 90% of the horses that I work on, all levels, from really high level to, I just work on, worked on Jeff Wilson's style. He's a good friend of mine down in the barn. I just worked on his horse. He was so, his horse was so painful. I'm like, look, Jeff, he's sort here and here. He goes, oh, that makes sense. That's why my saddle's sliding to the right. We as trainers know this, but we don't really know how we can fix it sometimes. And sometimes you can't. You gotta go through and you gotta get the muscle to release. That's why you guys have physical therapists and, and all of the other things. When you have an injury, you gotta make a recovery. Okay, so your rehab and your, your reconditioning is just as important, right? You're gonna shred that muscle and build it back up, okay? So when I'm working on any other areas, when we go down the back, if we look at this section, right there, did you see how he moved right here? That rib is probably sore under, you know, in, intercostals, or you might have this long back muscle might be sore right there. If we start to come back, your psoas muscle in this area, that's what brings the quadricep up and under. Usually if we start to push here, the horse is a little bit more sore. Not so much in Vinny because he's not a riding horse, but when you start getting on a, when you start treating a riding horse, you realize that this area gets pretty sore. Around the tuber coxi, which is the point, side point of the hip, when you start pushing in this area, there he's sore, okay? And it doesn't, listen, horses will function until they can't function anymore, okay? So don't think that I'm standing here preaching to you, oh my God, I can't ever ride my horse again. This is horrible. I've been really doing terrible things to my horses. Look, horses are the most forgiving animals on the planet, okay? They will borrow from all ends of their body until they're broken, okay? To do it for you. And that's what they do. Okay, so a lot of our horses that we have, I mean, I'm sure you've seen case after case after case after case 
The horses that come to them are in sad shape. And when they leave, they do not look like that anymore. They're normal, everyday riding horses. Okay, I love Days End. They make a difference for horses that are there all the time. But it takes a village, right? And they've sent me quite a few horses for training. And what I love about them is they're very realistic. And if I say this one is not going to make a riding horse because of physical incapacities or things it can't do, then it, it, it becomes a pasture mate for another horse. Okay, and that's important, right? Our expectations are not theirs. And so whenever we're working on our horses, we have to make sure that we're doing it in a way that is attainable. Okay, if you can't attain certain things on your horse, then why do it, right? Okay, so as we go through everything and we're going down the back and we start to look at the hamstrings, a lot of times here the horse will be sore. You have your semi-tendinosis and your semi-membranosis. Those are your hamstring muscles. You have your gluteals, you have your deep gluteal muscle here. Okay, and then you have where your, if you trace up the last rib, right about here, this is where your thoracic vertebrae starts to end and then your lumbar vertebrae starts. The lumbar vertebrae are not supported by the rib cage, okay, which means that they're kind of floating. That's how the horse does this, all your lateral movements, okay? You're, hi, what are you doing? Modeling, catwalking, okay? So when we come around and the horse starts to do your sliding stops, your canter departs, jumping, okay, knee changes, all of those barrel racing, I do barrel racing all the time, I'll just have to come up underneath. That's this area of the back, okay? When you start to get in where the lumbar spine stop, and then you start where the sacrum comes, so it's lumbar and the sacrum start, and then you have your SI joint here. A lot of stuff happens there. There's a lot of bend, a lot of lateral movement, a lot of things going on, a lot of things happening. Okay, so you want to make sure that this area stays healthy or it's going to be uneven, especially the pelvis. So if I'm going through the body and I'm doing these stress points and something comes up really positive, then I take the tubes and I put it on that area and I let those tubes work for a little while. Let's see if... Let's do... This is going to be quite funny, but we'll put the big tubes on. Shoulder, and then the other shoulder. 
Okay, and if you were working, if you were working on a horse, what I would do is start to work my way up and come up to the pole. Okay, and then eventually. Now, I will caution you. One of my students became a magnetic practitioner. She had the soul machine. She had the tubes on her horse's head. Something spooked him. He took off with her machine. The tubes ran for like a mile with the magnetic machine bousing along the side of him. Right? $10,000. She's bouncing along the side of him. And the tubes are still hooked. So, word of caution. I never, there's a lot of practitioners that will like Velcro, so it kind of stays like this, okay, and then they'll go work on something. If you ever get into this, don't attach your tubes to the horse, because you never, and this is a horse that was treated, I don't know how many times, something scared him and off he went, with the 10,000 magnet, $10,000 magnet machine bouncing along behind him. I know, they did help her fix it, thank goodness. And believe it or not, that sucker lasted pretty good. It actually, there was a part inside that broke, but the outer coating of these, like the outer shells of these are really pretty durable because you can travel on planes and stuff with them. It lasted pretty good, but it was just one of the parts inside that needed to be replaced. Does anyone have any questions? I mean, I can do my best to answer. It's pulse electromagnetic field there. Yeah. So anybody who is an engineer is really going to under, probably understand the scientific side of this. I love when I walk into barns and the engineer guys come up and go, oh, that's this much megahertz, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, that's fantastic that you know that part. I'll tell you all the muscles and everything that that works through. I'll go back to the website and learn all that. You do have to become certified for this. When you buy a machine, there's a certification through MagnaWave that you can do online. It takes about 30 hours, I think it was, something like that. Uh, I do this for dogs. I've treated a uh, sheep, goat. I really want to do the Texas Longhorns down the street for me. Uh, people have done random things. Deer, bear, bulls, bucking bulls out west. People do those all the time for the rodeo, so they buck better. Um, what else? Iguana, chickens. Pretty much anything. Anything with fur, yeah. Chinchilla. Okay. When you get into all of your all of your EPM and things like that, um, it's not you're, you're going for the immune system. So anything that you're doing to try to treat things like that, you're trying to get everything to build within the horse. So think of it this way: like everybody talks to me about, well, I'm giving my horse this supplement. Supplement. If things can't pass through, they're not really getting it fully. Okay, so whatever you're trying to do for the horse, if you can't have everything flowing through with good circulation, the horse can't fight what it needs to fight naturally. So we're just trying to get to a natural place where the horse can just fight whatever comes their way. So your overall health is going to be better, and that's the best answer I can give for anything that has to do with specific things. You know, sometimes I get called out for lymphangitis, and I honestly don't know if it's going to make it go down. Or I get called out for, you know, something specific. My horse has EPM. My horse has, you know, something else that's one of the ailments that is typical. And all I can say is through treatments, the horses get better overall. It builds up whatever is necessary for that horse to fight it. Um, and that's the best answer I can give because I can't diagnose, I can't go to somebody and go, this is going to be your cure. I can't. And even for people, the best that we can do is make sure that we can make everything so strong that we fight against whatever's out there. Okay, catch my drift on that one. With the, yeah. And <laughs> so when we're doing anything with, with MagnaWave, that's kind of what I try to stress to everyone. It's worth a shot. Hemp Hemp is good for anything. You're never, you're never losing out when you do a hemp therapy session. Because even if it doesn't go for that, it's going to go for something else because there might be compensation that you have no idea is starting. And on that note, if something, hemp is not going to bring something out. Okay, so let's say like this. If you're, if I go do a magnetic session and two hours later you're first colleagues, I did not cause your colleagues. 
Your colic was already stemming inside. It was coming out anyway. I just brought it to the surface quicker. Okay. Um, a lot of times, horses might pop abscesses after I start treating them multiple times. Do you know why? They got to detox somewhere. If it doesn't come out in urine, it doesn't come out in manure, it doesn't come out in sweat, it doesn't come out somewhere else, guess where else it pops out? Out the feet. Get it out. Right? And that's that's my whole thing with them. Get it out. One of the... Okay, good. You can... You can... What's my with Um, so... When we're talking about those kind of things with the horses, that, that's kind of what you want to think about on that level. We're trying to get ahead of anything, okay? We're not trying, and we're trying to prevent things from happening. Um, I'm gonna kind of wrap this up because Vinny has to go to Equitainment. You guys, if you get to go see Equitainment, these two are awesome. Like, go watch them, they're amazing. They do this Liberty show, it is great. Leah has done a fantastic job with this mini. He is so cool. So if you get to go see him on Stand on His Pedestal and all the things they do, I know I would love to be down there, but I get to go to my demo, so I'm going to come see you guys eventually. But thank you. You can go. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Vinny. <laughs> He's the best. Okay, so I'm going to wrap this up. If anybody has any questions, I'm in booth 315 to 316. I will not be there for an hour because I'm literally running over to the round pen. I'm actually taking over for Kenny Harlow because he can't be here this, this weekend. My horse Valencia is coming over there. We're going to do a standing still for mounting demo, I think. But you know me, I'm going to go into anatomy and why they don't stand still. And if you guys are around for the nighttime performance, I am in it with Jeff Wilson with my other paint mare, um, Phantom, who is 24. And we're doing a anything you can do, I can do better kind of battle of the guys against the girls team. So if you are present, cheer for me wildly. <laughs> because my horse is so, we had dress rehearsal last night, she's out of her mind. Like here I'm thinking she's going to be so cool and so calm and so collected. She's like, let's go. I mean, she was giving me moves she hasn't given me in 10 years. So I just have to hold on, basically. <laughs> but you guys, thank you so much for coming over here and seeing this. And I would love to answer any questions you have. Thank you so much. Have a great expo.